Surfing has this allure. It's about risk. It's about the unknown. It's about volatility. It's different to any sport on the planet. Every single time you go surfing, there's a moment where you take that leap. And you go from one medium to another. From your heart racing to wondering if you're gonna make it, that whole experience has happened in like a matter of 10 seconds. Sometimes you just see that wall of water. It's so powerful. That wave that you're riding traveled thousands of miles. It's special energy like the wave can choose you. It's way more than just a sport. It's an absolute love story between humans and Earth. The waves are not good today, huh? Okay. One day this will be. This will be you, though. You'll be out there. Raising my family in the surf community, it's, it's not in just one place. It's like the whole world where there's a coastline and where there's waves. <laughs> Surfing to Native Hawaiians is kind of like a way of life and also kind of like a rite of passage. I look at surfing as this subcultural solar system that there was this like big bang moment. No one really knows where and when someone stood up on a wave on a piece of wood and then it became the sport of kings and queens. Surfing was part of the structure of the community in Hawaii. It, it was deep-rooted. So the North Shore became sort of the center of the surfing universe. Surfing becoming a professional sport in 1976, ultimately getting into the Olympics, been an amazing ride. The person that wins that gold medal at Chopu, if the surf is on, is going to be the greatest athlete of that Olympic Games. What is true to surfing about the Olympics is it does bring together this like international community around a common passion. It's a place where we all go to have fun, connect to our culture and the ocean and each other. Yeah, I feel super lucky. It's so special to me. And I've also really learned how to be proud of these. Surfing brings everybody together because it's just pure, I feel like. People don't even speak the same language sometimes, but they surf together. Maybe people talk through the ocean. Everyone looks out for each other like that. And that's a special thing about just kind of having that small community. Both Jack and John have been raised by this international village that have watched them blossom into these men that they are. Over the past 20 years, high-performance surfing has become an almost acrobatic or gymnastic sport. What's beautiful about the surfing that someone like Jack Robinson or John John Florence does is that it combines the classical styles of traditional surfing with modern, futuristic, aerial, full-power surfing. With both Jack Robinson and John John Florence, they were raised as prodigies. As teenagers, they were on the covers of magazines and we're being flown around the world with the best surfers on the planet. You put a lot of expectations and when you're like a prodigy or whatever it is, I don't think the pressure will ever stop either. It's always gonna be there. Why not enjoy the ride too?
Ah, je regardais des photos. C'est trop vrai? mignon. <rire> Quand tu étais petite. Ma maman était une super maman. Taking us to all the competitions, all my friends. We had the smallest car, we took all the surfboards. <rire> But me, I don't like big waves. I am scared. <rire> I'm more scared than her. <laughs> I never dreamed of the Olympics, but in my little notebooks, I would be writing, I want to be a professional surfer. The women were only just finding the precipice of what's possible for the way that we move with waves. There's a lot of young girls that are pushing the limits, especially in wave of consequences. For years, women didn't get to surf at Waves of Consequence on tour. They didn't get heats at Pipe, and they didn't get heats in Tahiti. I feel lucky to be in that position with where the women surfing is right now. The future of women surfing is really bright. To see Joanne performing at the highest level, it sets this new bar for what it means to be a professional female surfer. Hard off the bottom, big hack there for the surfer that grew up in Reunion Island. Well, that's that board where you just can control it like that. You can go fast, slow, fast, slow. It's just, yeah, like slow, it's easier to move it around back at down. that longer length. I think that's so important for out there too, to be able to control that speed. Over 60 years, you look at the evolution of surfboard design and it's incredibly transformative. We've been doing a bit of board testing, just kind of locking in designs for the year. So being able to ride a smaller board in a bigger wave changed everything for me and how I looked at being able to do turns at higher speed. I think with the way surfing is judged today, this is a huge amount of creativity. Jack Robinson on the answer back here, pumps, pulls up on the rail, and Jack answers back. Surfing's judged on a one through 10 scale They like to say that it's about speed, power, and flow. Way back in the barrel, way back. As casual as it gets for John. It's different to being on a sporting field that's bounded by white lines. And it's up to us to choreograph what it is that we're doing with this wave, but it's also up to the wave. Everything is about timing. We go out the back on the right hander, back door in the barrel. Tyler Wright comes out. Everything builds up to just that moment. Just you, your board, it's the ocean. That's it. The surfer that's going to win the gold medal in Tahiti with the eyes of the world on you, it's the biggest pressure that any surfer will have ever felt in history. Tahiti has been a proving ground when it comes to waves of consequence, which is the measure by which a surfer is tested. When the best surfers in the world are at the most challenging waves in the world, you better believe that they're scared. But look at these absolute bombs coming through the lineup. Surfing Chopo is kind of unlike any other wave. I love it when Teopu just decides to say hello. You've got to want it. Take that drop with commitment. Power. Mojo. Force. Fire. To see the world's best expressing themselves in the craziest waves ever is so cool. Being in the Olympics and being able to compete for an Olympic gold medal, to me, it's such a special thing. And the Olympics is just giving us that long-term vision I'm carrying the, the flag on my shoulders, and there's the Olympics, but it's almost bigger than the Olympics. It's like a celebration of our sport. The beautiful thing about surfing is the ability to bridge cultural gaps between people. It's one of the true melting pots of the world. What does it mean to be a surfer? Being connected to the ocean in kind of like a spiritual way. So surfing has power. I know because I've seen it. It's a lifelong passion, and you see people that have done it for 60 years nowadays who are just as in love with it as they were when they first stood up on a wave. 
You can't really describe it to anybody, you just have to do it. A lot of wonderful memories. You know, surfing has uh, been so good to me. To see Olympics and surfing together, it's a really wonderful thing. For as long as we've been in the water, wave sliding has been a way of life. A sacred practice passed down for generations that harnesses Earth's energy. A culture that's not only survived, but gotten stronger. There were no lifeguards, film crews, or fans, and no prize money on the line, just pride. The simple act has created a ripple effect and the progress has empowered those who dare to dance on mountains made of water all over the world. This summer, surfing's best will come back to where it all started, the proving grounds of the Polynesian South Pacific and paddle out for glory, not just for themselves, but for their countries and those who came before them because in a way, we're still riding the same wave.